Okay, one really quick dilemma I want you to think about, and it may be one you're already familiar with. It's sometimes called the Afghan goat herds, the Afghan goat herders. There was a movie some years ago made about this called Soul Survivor, a Lone Survivor, and it's based on this actual event that involves these four Navy SEALs who back in 2004, 2005, I think, were doing um, some reconnaissance, some information gathering way out in the mountains in Afghanistan. They had been hiking for some number of days, um, just trying to keep it on the down low and try to figure out could they identify any places in these rural, um, wild kind of mountain outback areas where there were any armed Taliban fighters that may be preparing for um, engaging um, American soldiers. And despite their best efforts to keep everything on the down low, they stumble across some goat herders um, specifically about a hundred goats, a couple of farmers, and a young boy. None of them are armed in any way. Given the nature of the situation, these four Navy SEALs are now facing an ethical dilemma, and the dilemma is this. Either we have to let these guys go, or we have to kill them, okay? And here's why, that, here's why this is a dilemma. They don't have any rope. They have no way of restraining these goat herders. Um, so, Either they're going to have to let them go and run the risk of these goat herders hightailing it over to some Taliban encampment that they share sympathies with, who then notifies them, hey, I just ran into you know, four Navy SEALs, have at it. Or they're going to have to kill them because they don't have the ability to get out of this area in enough time to make sure that they're protected from other enemy fighters who may be in the area who are not hiking, but maybe have access to vehicles and so forth. So again, there's no other option, either kill them or let them go. There was no way to restrain them. And there's probably very little ability to be able to communicate with them because they don't speak the language. They don't speak each other's languages. So they face a dilemma and they do what you and I would do. They start to argue about it. I'm gonna go ahead and skip this, okay? One guy says, look, the decision is kill these guys or let them go. We're on active duty behind enemy lines and we have a right to do everything we can to save our own lives. And another guy says, nope, I don't agree. It would be wrong to execute these unarmed men in cold blood. All right, well, there's four of them. Two of them are now weighed in. They take a vote. The vote goes down like this. Two to one to let them go. One of the soldiers said, I'm not voting. I'm not going to decide. So in a two to one vote, they let these guys go. Hour and a half later, they get overwhelmed by 100 Taliban uh, enemy soldiers. Three of those four guys is killed. Um, and then the rescue helicopter that was coming after they'd, been, that they'd radioed that they were under attack, um, that was shot down and that killed 16 more people. The only pe people to survive uh, or the only person to survive of the original four was the man who argued that it would be wrong to have killed those farmers because they were unarmed, okay? So that's a real-life trolley dilemma. And the thing that sticks out about this trolley dilemma to me is um, I hope I never have to face a dilemma that has this much at stake, but I know that people do. And I know that when they do, that it might be useful to have considered ahead of time you know, what your values are so that you're, maybe I'm thinking naively, but I'm thinking the more you understand your own values and what you stand for, the easier it will be or the less difficult it will be to figure out what your values are when you're actually facing the decision. Now, the reason I say that is because of what Marcus Luttrell, the, the survivor, said afterwards. And I'm just going to read this to you. This is some number of years after this event took place. It was the stupidest, most southern, southern fried, lame brain decision I ever made in my life. I must have been out of my mind. I had actually cast a vote, which I knew could sign our death warrant. At least that's how I look back at those moments now. The deciding vote was mine, and it will haunt me till they rest me in an East Texas grave. So there's a number of things that really, uh, they rattle me about this, about what he's saying. One is, I think that his original decision, his original judgment, that killing those farmers in cold blood would be morally impermissible, I think that's a perfectly defensible position, given what he knew at the time. And yet, now that the events have transpired and he knows what the consequences of his decision are, he seems to be beating himself up over that perfectly defensible position that he made. It may have been an unwise one, 
given how things turned out, but it seemed to be a defensible position at the time. And we don't always know the way that things are going to turn out. And sometimes we make decisions that turn out to be the decisions we wish we hadn't made. But the d issue facing us is, what's the decision that we think is the best decision to make when we have the opportunity to make it? Because you don't have the opportunity to go back and remake decisions that you wish you had made differently. You can only make decisions in the moment you have the opportunity to make them. And he did. And it turns out he made a decision that he regrets, but I'm not sure he's regretting it for the right reason. Because it seems like you would only regret it if you didn't do the thing you thought was the best thing to do at the time you made the decision to do it. All right, so this sort of takes us to, to a, a point where you have to complete the second part of your thought primer. So you got one point of your thought primer for turning your answer to those couple of questions into me, and now you get to the chance to pick up the other half of your credit by answering one or a couple of questions, okay? So here's one question. As I know you know, people have different ideas about what is moral and what is immoral. One person may say that action X is immoral, Another may, person may say that same action is not immoral. What I want to know from you is this, is, is it possible that some people's moral judgments are better than the moral judgments of others? Or are all moral judgments equal in their value? And I really want to know how you answer that question. And in particular, if you're going to say that it's possible that some moral judgments are better than others, what would be the criteria that would allow us to determine which ones were better? And if it's possible, or if it's, if it's the case that all moral judgments are equal, why? So if that question uh, strikes your fancy, I'd love to know what you think about it for yourself or what you think about what one of your classmates has offered in response to that. And you answering this question or posting in response to one of your classmates post on the discussion board is how you're going to get the other half of this thought primer credit. If you don't like that question, you can always choose um, the Jaiji's ring question. And the question I have for you with the Jaiji's ring is this. Would you use the Jaiji's ring? And if so, for what purposes? And if not, why not? So now you're wondering, what the hell is a Jaiji's ring? Well, this is where you should go back into the Thought Primer and watch that five-minute video called The Jaiji's Ring.